Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Mo Show Live. Hey, I'm Morris Lillienthal. You know, there's a lot of discussion all the time about what's the most important things in your world, you know, family, friends, work. But I tell you, really, what's probably the most important thing in everybody's life is your health. Because if you don't have good health, you can't dedicate the time to your family, you can't dedicate the time to your friends, and you can't be as successful and work as hard and do the things that you want to do in life at work and in your extracurricular activity. So, you know, I think a lot of people out there um, have problems with, with trying to, to find the best fitness routine, find the best nutrition routine in doing those. I know that I personally have struggled with that for a long time and do. So that's why I'm so excited to have uh, fitness trainer Justin Ward on today. Justin and I are going to be talking about, you know, finding a balance between fitness and, and physical fitness and nutrition and how to stay motivated and doing. And let me tell you something, folks, I've been working with Justin as my trainer the last several months. If he can whip this guy into a little bit better shape, he knows what he's talking about. So I'm really excited to, to, to kick the show off and have Justin as our guest today because I'm getting a lot of questions about what I'm doing. But this is the guy to answer those questions, folks. So let me, without further ado, let me formally introduce Justin. Our guest today, again, is Justin Ward. Uh, Justin is a native of here, the Huntsville area, uh, born and raised here. He's a graduate of Buckhorn High School, was big into athletics growing up and, and lots of sports, and then in high school played basketball as a star all-state player for Buckhorn's basketball team. He went on and is now soon to graduate uh, in December at University of Alabama Huntsville. We call it UAH here locally. And it was a was a four-year player and integral part of the UAH basketball team. Has been named a uh, all Gulf South Conference player in the past. And last year, his last senior season at UAH was second team All Gulf South Conference player and, and just a really great athlete. And you know, Justin has a passion for fitness, um, and that is kind of I think what's probably helped make him a better athlete was that he's he's trained hard and kept his body in great shape. So, Justin, thanks so much for taking time, buddy. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm good, good. Glad to be on the show. So glad to be here. Well, man, I appreciate it. Justin and I normally see each other at five. So I'm the one guy probably <laughs> that can get a 20, early 20 year old kid to get up and come to the gym at 5 a.m. because I'm sure he doesn't, would not be there unless it's <laughs> No, it's worth it. It's great. It keeps me, keeps me responsible. So, um, and I love working with you. Well, folks, if you've got questions, if you're watching the live broadcast today and you've got questions about, you know, how to integrate something into your fitness routine or, or about nutrition or motivation or just anything in general, we'll try to get to those questions and let Justin take a minute to, to give you some pointers and some advice and feedback on that. But, yeah, um, definitely. you know, Justin, I guess the first thing as we kind of talk about, it, and this is kind of a conversation that you and I had when we first had a couple of phone calls and messages back and forth when I was talking, reaching out to you about getting started working with you was mm -hmm. what are your goals, right? You know, we, we got different, you, you could take 10 people, you take 10 people that walk into the gym every morning when we see them. We got different body types. We got different ages. And I know you work with with people that you know. I'm 41 years old, and you're working with kids that are going to be uh, going in to play basketball in college or in high school. You got older people. So I guess the first thing is if you're trying to start a new health lifestyle and fitness regimen, you got to look at what your goals are and what your body type is before you kind of go anywhere else. What do you think? Exactly. Definitely, definitely. I think the most important thing is just being real with yourself. You know. Um, everybody's fitness levels are different. Everybody's body types are different and everybody's like nutritional status are different. So first thing is just, you know, setting goals that are achievable, um, sh whether it's short term or long term, being real with, with who you are. You know, if you have never done anything fitness wise, you know, maybe starting off with, with lighter workouts or if you're a little more advanced, you can start off, you know, with a little more, more harder workouts. So I think the main thing is just, you know, getting down, being real with yourself and realizing, you know, what you what you really want to achieve within the next, you know, couple of weeks, a couple of months, or even years, you know, as your fitness lifestyle. So I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, right? So folks, if you're watching, and, and, and Justin and I have kind of talked about this a little bit for me, is is that, you know, I would set kind of short-term goals because if your goal is to lose, you know, 30 pounds or 50 pounds or whatever it might be, or if you're, if you're a smaller frame and your goal is to lose 15 pounds, that end goal is a great goal, but I think, Sometimes that can be so far out. Exactly. I think if you set shorter goals, okay, this week I'm going to lose a pound and a half or a pound. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. it, I think that helps with the biggest problem that I think we have. One of the biggest problems with this, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, is staying motivated and seeing results. And being consistent. You know, sustainability is number one. You know, that's the key. If you can like set goals to where you know we all have a, a end goal, 
but you know to set little goals in between you know you reach that it keeps you motivated for the next week and then you want to get to the next goal and that's you know that's the key it's just anything you can to keep you sustainable and keep you committed long term yeah so you know whatever works for you folks I, you know uh, kind of having that long-term goal is great but i think having the short-term goal and i think you hear that in in, in the business world and, and a lot of other things i think it applies in the fitness fitness world too is that you know having these goals and setting them and then in putting together a plan whether it's plan. Mm -hmm. on your own or having something together and that's kind of leads us right into the, the first real main that, topic that and I'm that's even what about. i do even for myself even being more advanced you know get you a notebook i have like a little notebook where i write down some of my immediate goals i put it over my bed or i put it above my bathroom so when i wake up brush my teeth i see it every morning just something that you know keep you to where you can see it even if you put it in your smartphone you know something to where you see that and you're like all right we're going to kill it today or we're going to hit this goal you know this today or whatever so that's that's a key yeah, I love that, and, and and you know that's always been a big motivation for me is writing things down and striking them off a list. And then you can do it now a little more tech savvy list and do whatever it works for yes, you. Sir. Um, but let's kind of talk about that. You know, one of the things that I think you know I'm getting questions from people about Justin is is I kind of shared my fat to fit journey and I'm still on it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, is you know what am I doing? And and so I think the first thing is is people are saying, well, I don't have six days a week, seven days a week to work out. So I guess the first thing, you know, you and I talked about one of the things when we talked about my body type and what my motivation was and what compass was, all right, Mars, how many days can you commit to working out week and how long each day? So I guess that's one of the first questions you need to ask when we, we're talking about, you know, weight training and cardio. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, for any plan, you know, it, it's like I've done research on it specifically, and it all says that, you know, a combination of weight training, resistance training, and aerobic training, which is like cardio, is the number one way, you know, to lose lose fat, you know, gain muscle and things like that. And so then once you can understand that, you know, you break it down into, you know, how many days can I realistically get in there, you know, whether it's three days, you know, kind of, you can kind of can do like a push-pull leg, kind of like what we were doing lately, or like, you know, a leg day might consist of, you know, your squats, some lunges, things like that. A push day, which is all your push workouts. So you push muscles, so it'd be like chest, um, your traps, and your triceps. And then you do like a pull day, which is all your pull muscles. So it'd be like back and biceps. And then, you know, if you can go to like a four day split, four to five day, we do kind of what we did before. You break it down more into the muscle groups. So you have like a leg day for one day. Then you have like a chest and back usually goes together. And you have an arm day, which is biceps and triceps, and then a shoulder day to itself. And then if you can go, you know, six to seven days, you know, you can combine those three together just twice a week and um, make sure you're getting at least three. I say I recommend at least three to four days of cardio in, you know, burning at least 200, 300 calories. And could that combine with weight training would definitely reap you some results. So that's the key. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I guess, you know, kind of to break that down a little more. So for, for the average person, um, they don't have a lot of time. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you said if, if somebody came to you and again, folks, you know, talk to your doctor, talk to, you know, your That's person. We're, we're talking about big, big picture concepts here. But in a general good, good industry fitness protocol standards, Justin, if you're had somebody that came to you and said, hey, look, I've got three days a week. I want to just mm -hmm. get it. I want to trim some weight. And, you know, how long do I need to be in the gym on average, Justin? And can you kind of give me just major body parts and, and, and what you'd recommend? I honestly, you, kinda, you you can get a, a, a good workout within, did I say about 30 to 45 minutes? If you can, if you can uh, include about 15 minutes of cardio, um, or, you know, our big, my big thing in cardio is I know a lot of people don't want to go outside or want to sprint. And so I'm huge, even as a basketball player, like now that I've, you know, kind of completed my career, I get on that treadmill, um, ramp that incline up and do me like, you know, about three to four speed and just get about 15, 20 minutes in and you'd be surprised how many calories you can burn. Um, so that's with the car, that's about 15 minutes. And you can honestly do about 30 to 45 minutes of weight training, um, depending on what muscle group you're working that day, based off, you know, what your plan is. Three to four exercises per muscle group is plenty enough. Three okay. sets, I recommend about 10 to 12 reps. Um, and to kind of know your weight, just play around with the weight, whatever feels good. You know, keep 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 track of, you know, the weights you use. So each week or two weeks, you're, you know, upping your, your weight. But man, just about three to four exercises per muscle group is plenty enough. About three sets. 10 to 12 reps and you're fine. Yeah. So folks, if you're watching, you know, what 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 I'm hearing is is that if you've got three days a week that you can devote to this, then you know, get together, put pen to pad or you know, keyboard to, to notepad on, on the smartphone and come up with a workout routine where you can you know 
okay, this is the exercises I'm gonna do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and here's this. And as Justin said, you might wanna kind of keep track of your weights and, and what you're doing so then you can surely you know, increase and then you can also mm -hmm. kind of keep tabs on how you're doing because that helps exactly. with the motivation part to see that mm -hmm. a month ago I was doing 10 pounds less. Now I've been able to increase my, you know, various bench press or squats mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So you can see some results there. Or even the cardio part, you know, maybe, you know, I'm only able to do, you know, four speed for 15 minutes. And then, you know, kind of how, we, how we've been doing, you know, as weeks go right. on, you know, you can increase it up a little bit to 4.5, going a little faster, burning more calories in that same amount of time. So just progressive overloading is the key. Make sure you're improving every week, every workout, you know, pushing yourself. Right. That, that'll, that'll reap you a lot of results. Yeah. And, you know, the, the one thing I, I think I would recommend kind of I was kind of thinking about, you know, us today was is that. I think if people, you know, when you find that that time frame, you can do it. Whether it's three, six, however many days you're going to do it, folks. My suggestion would be find that time and lock it in, and try to do it that day. Don't say I'm going to work out three days this week, and one week it might be Monday, Tuesday, Friday. The next week it might be Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And I know our work schedules and family schedules are different, but I really try because I think you'll be more successful in going if you know every every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at six o'clock, I'm going to the gym, 6 a.m. Oh, or 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, yeah, that definitely. to me would be helpful in, in, <laughs> because you set that side of time and, and you really just like an appointment at work or, or at mm -hmm. home or something, put it on your calendar and, and it, you know, unless something really comes up, don't miss it. Mm -hmm. And even if you have to, you know, sacrifice a little bit, maybe waking up an extra hour and a half, two hours early before work. Or, you know, once you get off, sacrificing that little hour after you get off before bed, you know, to get it in. Just any time you can really can find a way to squeeze it in. If you know you can, then, hey, that, that'll, that'll definitely help a lot. Yeah. And, and you know, one thing, you know, we were, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, is, is that I've noticed that we've done as I've gotten a little bit better shape is, is we've done some circuit training. Can I talk mm -hmm. to people a little bit about what that is? Because I know there are a lot of group classes and fitness classes, you know, you know, uh, cross training and, and um, different Iron Tribe and a lot of things that are, that are popular now that people have to discuss with. And I know that's just part of their, their routines is generally just speaking circuit training. Talk to us a little bit about what that is and why that's important. Well, we, we see circuit training. I like to incorporate a lot of supersets. So, you know, there's a day where, I, like, for instance, we might have a chest and back day. So we'll do like, you know, you, like I said, pick three to four exercises. So you say, say for the chest, it could be like bench press, um, incline press, chest flies, or, you know, something like that. Well, we, what we'll do is maybe flat bench, three sets of 10, and we'll superset that with a back workout, which would be like seated cable rows or, you know, barbell rows, simple dumbbell rows, and we'll do three sets of 10 there and then one minute rest and do three sets of that and that's one exercise. And then for the right. second one, switch it up a little bit and that's kind of how we, you know, incorporate it. Just getting, you know, picking three exercises, supersetting that with the other, you know, muscle group regardless, regardless of, you know, which one it is and then doing about three sets, 10 to 12 with that, getting you out a lot of time to rest and then just going with that, so. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, I want to say hello to our friend Chris Cassidy uh, watching up in Cincinnati. Uh, Chris, how you doing? Likes how you doing? He likes to work out in the morning before he gets to the office. And that Chris, that's that's definitely me. I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, how can you get up at 4.15 to go work out? But the answer is, is that's the only time it's going to get done. I don't have time during lunch, and I don't have time at the end of the day because I'm already exhausted and I want to get home and spend time with my family. So find what works for you. Um, you know, and, you know, what I would say that, that's helped me is that, and it's tough, I can tell you folks, it's not easy, but, but as I've gotten in better shape, when Justin and I do that, so I'll finish one exercise and then I'll pop right into a second exercise. And it, not only is it, you know, pushing me muscular wise, but it's getting my cardio going cardio in while you're lifting, while, while I'm lifting. Mm -hmm. so I, and, and, uh, and you can really, I think once you're able to, of course you have to build up to that. And I had to, too. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and what it helps what, with, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So, no, and what ahead. helps is like we talked about, you know, trying to find a way to fit it in in a quicker time, you know, being able to superset, you can get two exercises in within the same time as one in a rest break. So you can do, you know, six exercises is complete within 30 minutes, you know, by, by allowing you to superset and not get those rest breaks in between those exercises. So that helps a lot too with time management. Yeah, that's, there's no doubt about that. And then, and like you said, if, if you find that you can't, maybe some days you don't have as much time as the others, mm -hmm. that might be the day you do more supersets where you're back to back doing that stuff where you may not have time to get that extra cardio workout in or you're exactly. strained by time. That's a good point. 
Um, you know, one thing that, um, that uh, you know, I think a lot of people, especially people like me and not people like you who have abs of steel, <laughs> but people like me who don't have abs of steel, they're always wanting to say, man, I, I really love to trim down my midsection and do, mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about working core. I know, I, I know from working with you, you know, how you do it, but talk to us what your general thoughts are on, on working your core, why it's so important and, and what you recommend. Well, before I get on that, I will say this is something that I get asked all the time, you know, about abs and how to reduce my midsection. Number one is what nobody wants to hear. 80% of it is nutrition, which we'll get into that later. But so I just want to point that out. But no, definitely working your core because core is the most important. I, I really believe is the most important muscle because when you're squatting, when you're doing arms, anything, if you have a strong core, you can have, it, it supports your whole body. It's kind of like, your, you know, your feet or your legs, your core sustains your whole right. body. So having a strong core will help your exercises. So doing, you know, light, we do a lot of, you know, I like to do a lot of ab rate, like um, ab crunches. Um, we can do a lot of medicine ball uh, workouts. Um, planks are really big for strengthening your core, whether it's side plank, front planks, um, toe touches. They even have the machines, you know, where you hold on and you can do like little knee raises, um, physio ball rollouts, anything like that that can help strengthen your core. It depends on your, you know, your level of advance, but you can definitely do a lot, do a lot of core to strengthen it. So it's definitely yeah. really important. Yeah, and folks, what I would tell you is don't get discouraged um, because I can tell you that, I, I mean, I, you know, when Justin and I started together, I mean, I was already working out some, but I wasn't doing any core like what we're doing now. It, you know, it, basic set of crunches for me, front and then side crunches, was, was mm -hmm. I was spent after about two or three sets of that. And so now I've, I've, it's taken me over the course of a couple of months to, to now being able to do that as like an initial buildup. And so just, you know, find a routine and, and work it, you know, Justin, how often would you say, you know, if you're working out those three days a week, would you recommend doing core each day? I would recommend starting off. If, if you can do one to two days, it, you know, that's definitely fine. Um, abs core is one was one muscle group that you can train more than some of the other ones. But if you're just a beginner, you know, one that one day, then an off day and then another day on is, is perfect. You know, two to three days a week. If you can find a way to do that, that works a lot. And then once you get more advanced, you know, you can like we do lately, we, you know, we do kind of do it every day, but just just take your time and just like I said, know your body, you know, I don't want you sore and then, you know, try to go the next day. Just kind of read how you feel in the morning. If, you know, if you feel like you can get one in, you can. But one day on and off is definitely helpful for core. So okay. what I kind of recommend. Well, that's good to know because some people are wondering, you know, how often would you train that particular body part and how often mm -hmm. do so every other day, at least starting out that, that it's not overworking that, that group. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly. Um, so let's, before we talk about nutrition, we talked a little bit about cardio and, and I'll just kind of give my two cents. So what I've done, Justin has me doing is, is the treadmill and it's worked great for me. I do the max incline, I've had knee surgery, ankle surgery, and I'm just not going to run. And so, uh, but I'm amazed that in 25 minutes, I'll, I'll burn a little, easily over 300 calories and I mm -hmm. throw on a Netflix video or something and watch it folks. And, and that gets it in. I just do it at the end of my wait workouts and so mm -hmm. you know, find what works for you whether you're a treadmill guy or gal or whether you're a you know a, a elliptical person or whatever well, find something mm -hmm. yeah. and we like doing them, we like doing the machines too you know whether it's treadmill elliptical just for the fact that you know you can see the numbers you can see the calories burned you can see the time spent and that kind of helps as a motivator too you know if you have a goal like i'm going to burn, burn 200 calories you know where you're running, you might not know how much, you know, you get on that treadmill and you see, oh, I'm at 130, okay, 70 more, let's get it. You know, anything that can help you visualize helps a lot. So that's why we like those machines as well too. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and, and then as you said earlier, kind of tracking what you're doing with that too helps because you can find out that it, it, if you have a little more time, you can add a few more minutes to it, or if you don't, maybe exactly. you can increase the, the, the speed or you can increase the, uh, incline if you're doing an incline workout but i can tell you, when you it's, it's amazing that when you start hitting that incline button it helps well that's calorie that calorie count goes up goes a up lot. you know if you're doing four speed on a zero incline you might can get 300 calories in 40 minutes where we put it on 12 15 you can do those same same speed and get it in in 15 20 minutes it's amazing and you you really can't tell a difference to be honest but it, it definitely helps you know you feel it more in your legs a little bit but it definitely helps get those calories once again with time management in a quicker time so yeah. Hey, folks, if you're just joining us, our guest on the Motion Live today is fitness trainer Justin Ward. Uh, I've been working out with Justin for the last several months, and Justin knows what he's talking about. And we're talking about, we've been talking for the first part of the program 
about cardiovascular and weight training. And now we're going to get to the next part, and that's talking about um, nutrition. So, so Justin, you know, you know, there's every time you turn on Facebook or social media, you look online. There's always the new diet, and this is the mm -hmm. new diet. Don't eat this, eat this, or that or that. And, and, and some of them are successful. And different people, mm -hmm. some people are, 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 are vegans, vegetarians. Some people are, are low carb or, or keto, whatever. But can, can you kind of give us just if you had a client coming in that says, look, hey, I, I want to shed some weight, what would be some basic good nutrition recommendations you'd recommend to them? Well, to start on nutrition, I have this one simple rule that, you know, that I think everybody should know. You know, it's, it's a simple thing. If you want to lose weight, you have to eat less calories than you burn. Same as you want to gain, you have to eat, you have to eat more than what you, what you burn. So when it comes down to, you know, the keto, I know it's really big right now, um, paleo, high carb, low carb. It's whatever can, can help you sustain the diet longer. So if you're a person and you, you like bread and you like pasta and things like that, then by all means, you know, go high carb. Or if you like, you know, you can do the high fat, you're not really big on carbs, keto is fine. But at the end of the day, whatever diet that you can fit that can help, that can allow you to, you know, sustain it you know, weeks and weeks and weeks, then do that by all means. But the most important thing is calories. You know, if you have 10 bananas, if you eat 1,000 calories of bananas and 1,000 calories of steak, you know, still 1,000 calories, you know what I mean? So end of the day, calories is number one, but, you know, just pick a diet that you know you can stay, stick to, can eat, you know, within a calorie range, and it most importantly, sustain for long periods of time. And that that's the key to it. Yeah. So, well, and it's, 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 it's tougher said than done sometimes. Yeah, do definitely. It. But I think, you know, one of the things that's easier now than was years ago is because of this, the cell phone that you've got a lot of apps out there and you've introduced me, I think one called Eat This, there's My Fitness uh -huh. Pal. And My Fitness Pal is huge. Mm -hmm. and there's a litany of others and there's the old true and true, which is Google. And, and, but you can kind of Google around and mm -hmm. find information to help you track it that you couldn't a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm big on tracking calories, you know, not saying that you have to, you know, I do have a food scale and I kind of weigh my food out, but I know a lot of people out there at work, you know, you get, get 30 minutes, an hour, you know, you have to go find somewhere to eat and it helps when you're like, you know, say I want to go to Chick-fil-A, you know, you can plug in with these apps now with my fitness pal, things like that, plug in what you ordered and you can see how much, you know, fat, protein, calories and stuff is now, which helps tremendously. You know, if you have a certain calorie limit that you don't want to go over. It helps so much. Just help just plug those things in, and it can definitely let you see, you know, exactly what you're eating. Right. And I know one thing you've mentioned to me in doing too is is kind of you call I think you call them macros, where you kind of say, okay, well, this is kind of the calorie count that I want, mm -hmm. but of those calories, I kind of maybe want to because of depending upon your fitness level, is mm -hmm. okay, so much fat, so many carbs, you know, that kind of thing, and, and protein, and, and that's kind of stuff that is you maybe kind of if you're deep diving, I guess, into the nutrition. Mm -hmm. Those are some other things you may want to look at. Definitely, definitely. And depending on, you know, you know, a lot of people, the, the difference is, you know, keto is about, you know, low carb, high fat, or, or if you have like, if it fits your macros, some other plans are high carb, low fat. The most important uh, macro is your protein. And um, if I can recommend anything, guys should be getting in about one gram of protein per amount, per pound of body weight. And girls should try to get around, you know, 0.8 um, grams of protein per pound of body weight. So, that's one key that I can break it down simply. It's that. Just make sure you're getting your protein in, and that will help tremendously. That will help tremendously. Yeah. And I know that's something you and I have talked about and in, 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 in that you can get, um, you know, there's a lot of protein supplements out there, whey powders mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Or if, if, if you don't have time or easier, there's several. Uh, I like this Premier Protein that, that you can pick up at Walmart or Costco mm -hmm. or Tim's Club. That, that's a good one. That has a pretty good flavor to it. And I guess the other thing, you know, in terms about nutrition is this, which is Number one. drinking a lot of water. Staying mm -hmm. um, hydrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think the other thing I think, folks, that I've learned um, that I still struggle with on a daily basis is is trying to find little things, that little differences. I mean, if you drink soft drinks, you probably, you know, you cut out the soft drinks. Or if you, you know, drink coffee and you put a lot of sugar and cream in there, mm -hmm. I think by doing the my fitness pal or paying a little more attention, that you can cut a lot and save a lot of calories by just making little small changes. Can't you, Justin? Exactly, exactly. And it comes down to, like we said in the beginning of the show, is, you know, goals. You know, 
set yourself, you know, hey, I'm going to cut out, you know, soft drinks for, for the, you know, for the next few weeks or, you know, try to cut my candy down. You know, any little lifestyle change you can make will help you go long term to where you can make bigger changes to where, you know, once you're good, you know, not drinking soda or right, I'm going to not do soda and sweets or something like that. You know, anything that's allow you just to keep going because sustainability and commitment is number one on the, on, the, on the fitness journey. So that's kind of the key. Yeah. Well, one thing that you you had recommended to me and that I, I'd heard, I think I told you you may be the fifth or sixth person that I'd, I'd heard uh, talk about this, that I, that I put a lot of faith in what they told me, is, is kind of this intermittent fasting. And again, this is person specific, but a lot of people have asked me what I'm doing a lot of times. How, how, what are some of the things that I've done that I think have helped? Talk to the audience a little bit about what intermittent fasting is and how that might be beneficial for them. And what I like about intermittent fasting is, is I do it religiously. Um, it's not a meal plan. It's just a time of day that you eat your food. So regardless of what meal plan you're doing, um, what it is is you have an eight-hour eating window. So you have eight hours, and then you have 12 hours, or the rest, other 16 hours, you don't eat any food. So what I kind of, you kind of pick it based off, you know, your work schedule or best times you can eat. You know, I, I'm, I'm a late-night eater, so... Um, you know, a two to 10 kind of helps for me. So, you know, I, I don't have my first meal till two o'clock. So, you know, I've done one to nine before, 12 to eight, you know, depending on when you go to bed, but an eight hour window where you consume all your calories. And then the other 16 hours, you know, you, drink, you can drink water, have some tea, have some coffee, but um, right. saving yourself, you know, throughout the day, that way, you, you know, kind of skipping breakfast and then, you know, maybe starting at 12, 12 to eight, that helps you, that can help, you know, you know consume less calories throughout the day. So you're not snacking throughout the whole entire day. Yeah. Real quick, I want to say hello to Alexis Fallen down in Montgomery. Say hello to Bernard Berman, Bernard Domberg in, in Birmingham. I uh, hope you guys are doing great. Thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, what I would say, folks, is that's helped me a lot because I'm a late night eater. And, um, mm -hmm. A lot of us are. <laughs> and, and trying to find that cutoff line where I just say, okay, I'm going to quit at 8, sometimes 8.30. Oh, uh, <laughs> and in uh, in in starting the next day at noon. So that's generally what I try to do is I try to say I'm, I'm going to stop at eight and then not eat again until lunch the next day. And it's really not that hard because I'll drink a lot of water uh, mm -hmm. in the morning, you know, and then throughout the morning. And I do have coffee. You know, I, I will get coffee, yeah. but I have I've uh, come to to like not quite as much, but come to like black mm -hmm. coffee. So I don't Caffe put these Caffeine definitely helps um, because it's a natural, um, you know helps, you know, mask your hunger. You know, when you have a cup of coffee, caffeine helps that. So anytime you get a cup of coffee in the morning, which a lot of, most people do, that helps a lot too. You know, drinking water, that helps you stay full. It can be tough, you know, especially the first week or two, but once your body gets used to that window, it's so easy, man, and it helps a lot. Yeah, so folks, I, I would really, you know, if you're trying to look at a way, because the other thing that it does, folks, if you're, as Justin said, is you're trying to cut calories and, you know, I mean, you have all these diets, but it, Justin really nailed it, which is, if you're trying to lose weight, if that's part of your goal, then as long as you're burning more calories than you're taking in, that's it. And so for yep. me, if I've limited my window time of eating from 12 to eight at night, then I have more, I've got all those calories I can eat in that eight hour window. And if I'm at work, first half of that block of time, I'm only having lunch. So I just had lunch before we popped on here. Mm -hmm. I won't eat again. I may have a little small snack or something before dinner, but I got all these calories built up for dinner. And so I don't feel like I'm starving myself as much as exactly. I might have if I was trying to spread a limited amount of calories mm -hmm. out over a bigger window of time. And I'm sure too, it helps too with like product, like with so much more like such as like productivity and things. Cause like most people when we're on diets, you know, one thing we can't help is thinking about food <laughs> while we're on the diet. <laughs> so when we know we have that window, you know, say it's 12 o'clock when you start, when I get to work at eight, you know, I have four hours where I'm just, you know, doing, I know I'm not going to eat. So I'm not thinking about food, you know, I'm getting my work done, things like that. So when 12 o'clock hits, then it's like, all right, it's time to eat, you know? So that kind of helps too with that too. Yeah. Um, and, and say hello to my friend, uh, Mike Albee out in Texas. Mike is, uh, we call him big Mike and he, he's been working. I know he's been working started with his nutrition and cutting some weight. So he's, How you doing, Mike? he's on his way. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing his results. The last couple of things here, Justin, before we, before we, before I uh, let you go and want to be uh, mindful of your time is uh, motivation and, and staying motivated. And that's kind of what we talked about sustainability at the beginning of the thing. Um, you know, talk to us a little bit, something that you and I just did, I think this is maybe our second week doing this or third week where we changed up our workouts and talk a little bit about is, is, is people get into a routine and maybe they're six weeks, eight weeks in that why changing their workout might be a good thing. 
Well, it's just like anything, you know, just like, you know, with eating and with, you know, dieting and things like that, you know, your body gets used to, used to things, you know, if you're used to waking up every morning, you get used to it. But at the same time, you know, if you're doing the same workout about six to eight weeks, you know, you kind of get, you, you ever had it to where like you're working out and like the first few weeks it's hard. And then, you know, as you get stronger and as you get more, you know, your fitness level increases, you know, it gets a little, a little bit easier. And the key is always make sure you're pushing yourself. So it definitely helps to, you know, change the exercises, you know, what I could do, you can Google, you know, say you have a chest day, you can Google plenty of exercises. So maybe pick three or four this week, do that for about four or five weeks, and then, you know, try to find a few other different variations to the same same kind of workouts, and that helps as long as you're just mixing it up because your body definitely can get used to it. And as things get easier, you know, that's, that's, that's less beneficial, so you want to make sure you're always pushing yourself. And by pushing yourself, you're all, your fitness level will continue to increase, and that will help, you know, with the weight loss and the metabolism and all that great stuff, so... That's, that's good advice. And just for pure monotony and get, getting tired of doing the same thing and doing it, because that's what I was mm-hmm. doing. Before. You I get thought. bored, exactly. Um, the other thing, I, you know, I would say, folks, is is uh, one of a couple of things to help keep you motivated um, that, that I've found over the years and that I've found now certainly working with Justin is, is whether it's finding a class, you know, a body pump or something at your local gym or finding a workout partner, somebody mm-hmm to hold you accountable. And, and you know, that's one of the things, one, I hired you because of your knowledge, and two, I hired you just to hold my big self accountable, to make sure I'm there and to push me a little bit harder than I know I push myself. Definitely, so, definitely. You know, I, I think you, I think people, if you're watching, that you know, find somebody or some way to help hold you accountable mm-hmm. um, and, and do, because that's helped me. I tell you, you know, I enjoy one of the things that I do on my own is Peloton. I have a spin bike and, I love my Peloton bike, and it, it's a great way that when I'm doing that, I'm on line with a bunch of other people doing it, and I'm trying to compete against them and compete mm-hmm. against myself. And, and the same thing with you. You're holding me accountable when we're in there and pushing me and doing it. So that's helped me, folks, and I, mm-hmm. I'd really uh, recommend that. Um, you know, Justin, you know, how can, you know, people, if they want to get questions for you or they want to get up with you or, or you know, and I know you're real active on YouTube and and mm-hmm. Uh, and on Twitter and Instagram, how can people catch up with you and find maybe some more workout information? Well, first, my email, and they can definitely email me. My um, email address will be justinwardlifestyle at gmail.com. Um, I'm active, really active on social media, so YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Um, my Instagram is just is Justin Ward Fitness. My Twitter is Justin Ward Fit. They didn't have enough characters for fitness. <laughs> and then um, my YouTube, you can follow me at also at Justin War Fitness as well. So I'm, I'm on all those a lot of time of the day. So, you know, a quick DM or email or a comment, you know, I'll, I'll try to reply to you as soon as I can. That'll definitely help. So, yeah. And it, so what, we'll, what we'll do, Justin, and everybody watching at the end of the show here in the comments below, I'll, I'll put a link uh, to the various uh, social media handles and into your YouTube channel so people can try to catch you that way. But mm-hmm. Justin's very giving, folks. He'll, he'll be glad to give you some quick tips. Yeah, or- don't hesitate. Yes, don't hesitate. Yeah. I'll definitely be right up my alley. That's what I like to do. I found a way to help people while doing something I'm passionate about, so I really enjoy it. So, Well, I, I'm real thankful for you, and I'm thankful for, for, for your help in doing And people, you know, I have uh, – you know, one of the things, if people reached out to me, and, and I just, you know, really lean back to, to you, you're where it started and me getting back in back into shape and uh, mm-hmm. I'm appreciative of that. But I, I take something, folks, that, that, that I think has been really interesting for me, and again, each personality type is different, but sharing my journey on Facebook has really helped because I, I really have in the last month or so, uh, a couple of times, especially on days that I'm not meeting you, I'm going into the gym on my I may not have thought about not going, but I know that somebody else is going to hold me accountable online. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, by me posting a quick picture or me and you doing a video or doing, I have a lot of people that are saying, "Hey, your tips and your you're motivating me." But but in turn, those people are motivating me because exactly. they're counting on me to get and do. So I would tell you, you know, don't be shy about you know if you don't want to share your weights and do all that, that's fine. But just you know, kind of document your journey, and and I think you'll that'll help motivate you. And then I think you'll find that there's a lot of people better that are in the same boat. 
Yeah. And that's, that's what's so great about social media is, you know, you can build your own community within itself, you know, whether it's your coworkers, family members, friends, you know, you can find a little group, you know, y'all each have y'all plan, you can challenge each other, and that can be a way to keep motivated as well. You know, any kind of things like that where you have people, maybe that might, might not be there in person, but with social media, you know, online presence is just, is just as important. You know, you might post, you know, I ran two miles today, you know, your turn, things like that, and that'll definitely right. help anyways, yeah. Great, great advice and thanks. Justin, thanks so much for your time today. And folks, we'll we'll um, we'll put Justin's information down at the bottom if you got questions, hit him up. But but get out there, get motivated, get a plan, and set a big goal, but set those small goals and start walking to them and let us know how you're doing. Definitely. Justin, thanks Thank again you. for your time. Thanks everybody. Thanks for having me. Thanks. You guys have a good day.